Hey everybody, welcome back to the Headwaters channel. Seth here, and today we are gonna be talking about how to pack for kayak camping trips. I've done a ton of kayak camping over the years between kayak fishing trips, whitewater overnighters, and just going kayak touring on fun camping trips on flat water. So I've really dialed down my kit to a pretty lightweight, compact kit with a great way of packing it to keep everything dry and safe. So I'm gonna walk through my kit um, this works really well for me. Uh, most people over the years, as they do more and more trips, they'll kind of figure out their own way of doing things with little modifications here and there. Uh, I do want to mention that this is not sponsored by anybody. So if I harp at a brand or a specific product in this, it's because I really like it. Um, like I said, I've been doing this for a long time and I've really figured out exactly what I like to use. So if there's something that I've got in my kit, um, it to me functions really well. I've got a big pile of gear on the floor behind me here. We're gonna jump down there and I'm gonna explain what everything is, pack it down into the boat, and see how everything works. Let's check out this gear. Okay, so I've kind of got everything divided up around me into piles here. Um, I've got my camping gear. I've got kind of some safety and repair stuff. I've got my hydration and my food. And then I've got a big pile of dry bags. I'm gonna start off with the very basics, which is my setup for sleeping. The first thing I've got is a sleeping bag. It's just like a 40 degree bag. I don't even think they make this one anymore, um, but it's really lightweight. It packs up really well and it served me well. I have another sleeping bag that's like a 20 degree bag that I'll use if it's really, really cold, if I'm going out in the early spring or even sometimes going on paddling trips in the winter. Um, but nine times out of 10, I'm gonna bring a 40 degree bag just cause it packs down smaller. Um, so usually I don't use the compression bag that comes with these um, because I'm putting it in a dry bag. Even if it's going in a hatch that's sealed behind a bulkhead, I still will put this in a dry bag because if this thing gets wet at all, I'm not gonna sleep well. Below that, I use just a little collapsible inflatable climate sleeping pad. Same deal, I've been using this for years. Climate has proven, in my opinion, to be a really good company. My wife has the same one. She's had a couple warranty issues with hers uh, and they've always taken care of us. So I'm a big fan of this one. And this one does in fact get really small. This is one of the bigger ones. So this is like the large one. So next up, I've got my shelter. I sleep out in the open a lot anytime that I can. I just love doing that. Um, it's a huge part of the experience for me, but I always bring a shelter with me. The one that I'm gonna bring is this outdoor research bivy. Um, this thing is, I think, a great compromise between size and weight and also being comfortable. Of course, you can get like the bivvies that have no structure whatsoever and they just fall on your face. Um, but this is actually waterproof. It actually has a little pole that goes over your face. I pack this into a dry bag as well. Once again, lack of redundancy. And I actually leave the tent poles out um, because then I can get the bivy shaped differently. Um, it'll fit better in the boat. I can actually pack it down quite a bit smaller than this. It's only gotten used a couple of times when it rained unexpectedly, but it did its job then, and that's huge for me. And then my final bit for sleeping, I don't always take this, um, but I do enjoy having a travel pillow. Um, this guy is just packs down really small. Let's actually start with hydration. I bring, I'd bring a normal water bottle. This is my cool fun water bottle that has all my kayaking stickers on it. Um, I keep this just in the boat with me all day. So this stays in the cockpit, uh, very accessible because I want to stay hydrated. Uh, and then I generally, as long as I'm anywhere with reasonable water quality, like if it's not disgusting, I just use this little Sawyer filtration thing. You basically just open it up, you scoop water into it, you close it back up, and then you kind of just slowly let the water flow out of it. Um, it works really well. I have used it a lot and I have not gotten sick. So I trust in this thing pretty heavily. So these two is it for hydration for me. We'll move on to actual cooking setup. Just a MSR ISO Pro. Oh, what size is this one? This is just a 16 ounce can. I know obviously there are smaller ones. I like bringing a bigger one just in case somebody else runs out of fuel. And then very important piece, this this is my wife's camp stove, actually. She, she had it when we started dating. Um, and I've kind of just adopted it because I use it more than she does. Um, but it is Snow Peak, which is a really cool brand. Their stuff is not cheap, but it is generally pretty amazing. I mean, this thing is just mind-blowingly tiny. That's it. That's your whole boing, unfolds, screws right on the top, has a little ignition right here. Uh, this thing is amazing and I love it. It's super, super crazy light and super small, insanely packable. So 
big fan of this one for my actual, you know, kit of stuff that I cook with and eat with and such. Uh, little GSI outdoors uh, pot. I got this at Walmart six or seven years ago. It's been awesome. Uh, has two bowls inside of it. This one actually came with four bowls. I just bring the two. I feel like this is plenty. Little um, fork spoon combo. It's by a company called Light My Fire. Um, I'm starting to kind of get tired of these plastic ones. I've actually broken a lot of these. Um, they're really cheap and I'm kind of starting to feel bad for the number of them that I've broken. Um, I've got a metal one that I think I'm going to start using because these plastic ones, like I said, they just keep breaking and I feel kind of bad about it. So the reason I've got this exact setup, this GSI with just the two bowls in there, is because, boom, that fits perfectly in there. For food, I try to stick with just camp food. I'm not really picky about brand of camp food. I usually try to find something that's on sale. It all kind of tastes the same to me. If you want to go like super, super, super crazy ultralight, there is a really cool uh, company called O'Meals that I have used in the past for whitewater trips when I needed to cram like a bunch of stuff in. And the cool thing about them is you don't have to filter your water or anything. Um, you basically, you just pour, you can just pour river water unfiltered straight into the bag. There's a separate bag within that has the food. It's got this crazy little heat conductor in there that reacts with the water. I don't fully understand the science. Kind of pricey, um, which is why I don't really use them that much. I'll usually stick with something like this, as long as it doesn't sound like an egregious flavor. I'll probably eat it. So this is veggie burrito bowl. Sounds great. It is worth noting that I am not gonna pack a full kit of meals uh, right now because I don't actually have a full kit of meals. Just finally running low on camp food and need to stock up, but I will leave plenty of room. I might even inflate a dry bag to the size of uh, how much space food would normally take up and put it in there to show how that fits. That's the whole setup for hydration and eating. As far as what I pack for clothes, the most I'm probably ever gonna pack is if I'm paddling during the springtime, uh, in which case I'm gonna pack something warm to sleep in and I'm gonna pack some extra base layers um, because I'm gonna be paddling in a dry suit if it's still cool out. Something cozy to sleep in, a pair of pajama pants. Got this sweet, super soft immersion research hoodie. This thing is ridiculously cozy and one of my favorite things to wear around camp. Kind of big and gratuitous, but once again, sleeping is important. I like to be comfortable after a day of paddling. So I bring that. Uh, and then I'll bring a union suit. This thing is awesome. If you're not familiar with union suits, basically this is just like a one piece base layer that you wear under your dry suit. Keeps you super warm and comfortable. This one's like a micro fleece. Been using that for a couple years and I love it. Then I'll have merino wool base layer shirt and wool base layer pants and that's two extra days worth of clothes so if i get wet on day one for some reason under my dry suit then i'll have that i'll bring a sun shirt just in case it gets warm so got this nrs nice sun shirt with a hood and a face cover two extra pairs of wool socks and that's it so lastly i kind of have a very small i guess you would call this like repair and first aid setup. So for first aid, I don't have anything super fancy. Adventure Medical Ultralight Kit. This is a waterproof bag. I still stick it in another dry bag. I wanna keep this as sterile as I can, but um, they do make this little waterproof guy. It's about 20 bucks um, and has like gauze, band-aids, all your basics in here. Gerber Multi-Tool. Um, in case anything goes wrong with the boat, this thing's got screwdrivers, knives, little saw, um, everything you need to make magic happen. A sponge. You don't have to have one that's shaped like a fish, but it's kind of cool. And then Gorilla Tape. Um, specifically Gorilla Tape, because if you crack a boat while you're out camping, you can usually get by with just Gorilla Taping both sides of the crack. It'll usually get you through a weekend trip, and then you can plastic weld or get a new boat or whatever you want to do when you get home, but Gorilla Tape will get you a lot further than you think it would uh, if you're if you're really in a in a tough spot in the water. So Gorilla Tape is something that always goes as well. So that's everything that I actually pack. And then of course I've got all my dry bags that we're gonna take a look at and start packing stuff up and then putting them in the boats. All right, so I guess there's not anything left to do now except get packed. Something that's pretty cool and not talked about a lot if you're gonna put everything in a dry bag, it's called a stow float. 
So if you've ever seen a float bag, if you have a sit inside kayak that doesn't have those sealed bulkheads behind the seat or anywhere, um, a float bag is highly recommended, right? Because it's gonna give you that positive flotation if you flip. So this is basically a float bag that's also empty on the inside. So you basically can fill all your gear up in here, get it packed like you would for camping, seal it up just like you would seal any other dry bag, roll it over a few times, and then if it's full entirely, you just stuff it in the boat. If it's not totally full, there, there's an inflatable bladder in here, so you can just blow it up the rest of the way, uh, and then you have positive flotation filling any empty space in the boat, and you have your gear in a dry space. I highly recommend them. I got this one really cheap. Um, there are also some really nice ones out there. Watershed um, Dry Bags, for example, is a company that makes a really great stow float if you can swing it. Um, but this is a really cool piece of kit if you want one big bag to throw everything in. If you like to compartmentalize stuff, then you can just use a bunch of small dry bags. I basically got a stack of 15 liter bags and I've got a 10 liter, got a five liter, got this 22, I've got my stow float. And the other thing you have to keep in mind when you're packing this way is being realistic with how much space you have. You have to be mindful of if you have only, you know, an eight or 10 inch hatch, well, you gotta make sure you don't use a really big dry bag like this 22 liter that when it's fully stuffed may not even fit in there. You might have to shove it at a really awkward angle. So in that case, you would wanna go with smaller bags like 10 liters maybe. I think what I'm gonna do uh, is I'm gonna pack my camping gear into the stow float here that's pretty big. Um, and we'll set that on the sit on top, see how that looks. We'll also do it in the creek boat uh, that's much smaller, sit inside with no bulkhead. I think pretty much everything else into the smaller bags. So let's do that. So you'll notice I'm not insanely meticulous about how I put all this in, but one thing really want to do is make sure if you have like an inflatable sleeping pad like this, make sure your valves are wide open when you're packing it up because otherwise you can end up with some air trapped in there and make things take up unnecessary space. This guy's got a little air trapped in it so I might need to roll it back out here. Oh, there we go. One of those valves was open. I was keeping some air trapped in there. Now I'm kind of able to just roll a little bit of excess air out. It's looking a lot better. So with something like the stove float, you want to keep in mind the shape of the things you're packing. So what I'm gonna do here, is I'm actually gonna put in my bivy first. I'm gonna take the, the tent poles out. Really small, but it still kind of takes up some space. I'm gonna take the bivy itself out, because I don't need two bags. And I'm just going to shove this thing down the bottom of this stow float. And boom. Nice small thing, fills out the bottom nicely. I'm going to take my pillow, pop that down in there next. And I'm going to take my sleeping pad and put it in here after that. So I'm probably going to call it there. There's a lot more room in this, so I'm only up to about here, but I think if I stuff my sleeping bag in, a couple of things are gonna happen. So first of all, it might overfill it to a point where I can't get a really good roll on this. And having this rolled adequately is what keeps it dry, right? This is not a Ziploc bag, it just seals by you rolling it. So I don't want to overfill it. So the second thing that's gonna happen is it's gonna kinda get big and rigid and and I'm not gonna be able to flex it. And I wanna be able to do this in case I'm stuffing it down in a hatch and I need to kinda of bend it and then shove it in the rest of the way or whatever I've gotta do. I want this to be able to, to shape, to be malleable and be able to flex and get into to nooks and crannies. So I'm gonna leave it here and we will put the sleeping bag in a different one. I'm gonna roll this down about three or four times. Boom. So there we go. I've got my bivy, my pillow, and my sleeping pad all in here. I know this looks kind of big for what's in there, but it's gonna probably shrink up even more. And what'll probably happen when I put it in the boat is I'll actually probably open this back up and let more air squeeze out and it'll cinch down in there really nicely. We got this pile of 15 liter bags. I'm gonna toss the sleeping bag in here real quick. So 
Sleeping bag is ready to get packed now. Got my tent poles. I'm not gonna put these in a dry bag. I don't care if these stay dry. Um, they're just gonna be on the outside of my bivy. Um, I'm more concerned with them breaking. And if I put them in a bag with a bunch of other stuff, I'm shoving it in, it can flex and so on, which of course I have my Gorilla Tape so I can fix this if I need to, but I would rather keep them in good shape. So I will just shove them kind of into the boat with everything outside of the dry bags. Got a little five liter bag. Um, and this is just gonna be my medical kit and my Gorilla Tape. So med kit in there. Got my multi-tool, got my Gorilla Tape, and that is that. That gets down really small. And this is in a nice bright orange bag, so I can find it really easily. I will probably put it in the boat last so it's right on top in case of an emergency. I got a 10 liter in our rest bag. This is a nice heavy duty bag that I've had for a super long time. We're gonna throw our camping stove and cook set in there. Got the actual stove piece, it's super, super tiny. I'm gonna roll up my filter, so I'm gonna actually get that loose. Roll that up a little bit so it takes up even less space. Into the bag you go. And yeah, boom. Now, honestly, it looks kind of like the 10 was way overkill for this. Probably could have gotten away with a five, but that's okay. I think I can get all of this into this 15 liter. There is one last thing that I almost forgot to mention that I have discovered over the years is really important. Bring an extra pair of shoes to wear at camp. So I will usually bring a pair of Chacos, even if it's cooler out, because I can just wear a pair of socks, kind of stomp my toe down there and just wear them with the socks and they protect the soles of my feet. You're gonna have wet shoes. You're probably not gonna wear your wet shoes around camp. You're gonna wanna get dry at the end of the day when you've been on the water all day. So I like to bring a pair of Chacos. They pack down really easy, I'll throw them in a dry bag. Um, and just keep those kind of off to the side as my, as my shoes for camp. Um, you could definitely go with something more lightweight than these, but I feel like these are really utilitarian. If I wanted to go on a side hike or something one day, I could wear these as well if my um, paddling shoes were still wet. If you have room and you can swing it, definitely want to bring an extra pair of shoes. Five liter bag. I'm going to drop this in there. Boom. No, there we go. Roll it up real nice. And boom, got our extra pair of shoes. Since I only have these two camp meals, what I'm gonna do is kind of roll up this bag with some air in it to about the size. Let's see, how many meals would I want for three days, two nights? I'd have dinner for day one because I already have eaten lunch. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, breakfast, lunch. So about six meals is really what you need. Um, for a three day, two nighter. And that is plenty of room for six camp meals right there. So this is it. This is everything that's going with us. We got food. We've got our sleeping bag. We've got our camp, me uh, our camp cooking set up. We've got our safety gear. We've got our clothes. And then we've got our bivy and sleeping pad, et cetera, other sleeping stuff in there. So that's everything. It's really small. We'll pull the tarpon out and kind of set everything on it, pack some stuff down in there, see how easy this is. So I'm gonna start by putting things in my front hatch here. And I generally, I like to start with the bigger stuff. In this case, we got plenty of open space. I'm putting my clothes in first. That's one of my bigger bags. I'm gonna shove my sleeping bag in here, shoves nicely up into the bow. My camp stove and such, right on the bottom there. Camp meals, shoving in there. Extra pair of shoes, boom. And then on the very top, my first aid safety kit, Gorilla tape and first aid stuff. So that's really easy. I mean, there's 
you know, it doesn't look like there's a lot more space, but I could easily fit a ton more stuff in there. You know, if you've got a rec kayak like a Pungo or something like that that has just one hatch, um, you could easily have pulled that off. Um, and then we've got the stove float. In this case, with the stove float, I'm just going to shove this on the back under the bungees here, and I'm going to clip the top of it, the bungee, boom, super easy, all good there. My sponge, I'm probably actually going to keep on top of the boat, shove right here, and my water bottle is going to stay up here with me. Almost forgot my tent poles, I'm actually a little torn on this one in this case, I'm going to put them right here and just kind of wedge them in the front where I can see them, I don't have to worry about them escaping. So there you go. So that's how easy it would be to sit on top. Um, that's about as easy as it's gonna get. A few minutes packing, really easy to throw on the boat. It'd be really easy to access all my gear at the end of the day. Um, and everything's nicely divided up. So now we're gonna pull down this uh, Piranha 9R, which is about as tough as you're gonna have of a boat to pack, um, because even most wreck kayaks are gonna have a lot more space than this. Uh, and we are gonna have to kind of work to get all of this in the stern behind the seat. So let's go ahead and do that. This 9R is gonna show us really how difficult it can be, and it's not because it's a 9R or anything along those lines. It's just because the only way we can get gear in this boat is in this gap behind the seat. So it you know, can be tough to pack this. If you've got you know, a smaller recreational kayak, like a nine or 10 foot sit inside. This is kind of similar to how your packing experience is gonna be. The good news is that normally sit inside recreational kayaks will actually have a little more open space right here and the seat won't be as connected. So it'll actually be a little easier. If you have one of those smaller sit insides, this is pretty similar to what you're in for. And once again, if you're doing this with one of those smaller sit insides, I really, really do recommend something like a stove float because it's going to make your life a lot easier. So on that note, we're going to start with the stove float. I'm actually going to open the top of this bag up to let any air that's left inside kind of push out. And we're just going to shove this guy down in here. And you can see already kind of having a tough time with the back band and these little straps kind of getting in my way. But we're still making some good progress. Boom, got that in there. I don't really need to inflate this anymore because it's in there pretty snug and we still got a lot of gear to get in this boot. All right, here we go. So we got it in there. It's shaped nicely to the inside of the hole, right? So now make sure I've got a couple of rolls here. Oh yeah. Got yeah, at least two, and there's three. And we just seal this up, shove it back in there about as far as we can. And that's great, because that actually leaves us a little bit of room for another bag. So I'm going to take some of my smaller bags, this is my extra pair of shoes. I'm just gonna put that right there, right in front of it. Got our clothes next, another kind of bigger bag. And I think this is going to be pretty snug. I may have overpacked on clothes in this case. And once again, you see all that air is bubbling up. We're just going to open the dry bag. Oh yeah, a bunch of air just came out. Get it in there the rest of the way. Roll it back up, make sure nothing's in there. Got our three rolls. And that ought to do it. Oh, there we go. Shove that back in. All right, Whew. sleeping bag next. Yeah, this is gonna get pretty snug. This is always just, every time I pack into a boat like this, it always just comes really down to the wire on space. And I don't think it's gonna be any different this time. I might end up actually having to put some stuff in the front in between my legs. Oh yeah, there we go. Nice. A little bit of the sleeping bag kind of trying to leak out there, but come back in. And got three rolls. It's good to go. Oh, yeah. We're going to be pushing max capacity here. So, what do we got left? We got our cooking kit, which, once again, this isn't too big of a bag. 
I should have gone with like a five for this, and now I'm paying for it. But, got most of that air out of there. I'm just gonna roll it down. And, should have room for this. Ooh, it is snug, I tell ya. Oh yeah, we're gonna be up to the wire here. Get my water bottle in up the front. We've got safety gear and food left. Ooh, hoo, hoo, buddy. Yeah, food. Once again, this has got a little extra space. I bet it would get down smaller than that. And I fit you. you fit right there. tight, but it goes. Bungees tighten back up here. Boom. And my sponge. And last but not least, tent poles just slide in the side. In the top maybe? Oh, there we go. Just enough room for those bad boys right there. Whew. So that was snug. Like I said, that's that's about as hard as it gets. We've got everything in there. There is one last little bit of safety gear that I kind of recommend. If you're doing whitewater, you're already gonna know about this, um, but it can be a really helpful thing to have on trips. And that is a throw rope. Um, you never know what's gonna happen, especially if you're out with other people. So if somebody's boat floats away and you need to go track it down, you can use a throw rope to tow it back. Um, if somebody is just getting swiped wiped out in a river or something, you would rescue them with a throw rope. So this is a really handy piece of safety gear that that literally is for saving lives and saving boats. So um, highly recommend having a throw rope if you can. If you can swing it, I highly recommend having a throw rope on you. And I like to keep mine right there in between my legs. So that's it. That's gonna do it for our video on how to pack your kayak for camping. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave us a like. And if you wanna see more content like this and more paddling content, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you've got any questions about paddling, about kayak camping, please leave those in the comments below. We'll get back to you. Thanks again for watching. Happy paddling.